Well, good evening. I'm Chuck Todd here in New York, and welcome to MTP Daily. Tonight's lead is one that we as journalists take no pleasure in writing. Folks, it's one thing to evade. That's common in politics. But it's another when you mislead and get caught. And it's a whole nother animal if you flat out lie. Do you see any circumstances where it's appropriate to lie from the podium? Absolutely not. I don't think it's appropriate to lie from the podium or any other place. And it's a question that had to be asked today of this White House. But to cover this White House over the past few days, it has been a mind-numbing combination of shocking, frustrating, and depressing. Because as bad as we thought the credibility crisis was, it's gotten much worse. They've compounded misleading statements with misleading statements about those misleading statements. They've been caught in blatant contradictions and petty fabrications. Where to begin? So let's start with that misleading statement that Donald Trump Jr. first gave the public about his meeting with a Russian lawyer during the campaign. First, you're going to hear what the president's lawyer, Jay Sekulow, told me on Meet the Press a few weeks ago, followed by what the White House ended up saying yesterday. The president was not involved in the drafting of the statement. He weighed in, offered suggestion like any father would do. So was Seculo lying to me? Was he just misinformed? That we don't have, we don't know, and it's a question he needs to answer. But either way, what he said turned out not to be true. Then the White House made things worse by saying this. The statement that Don Jr. issued is true. There's no inaccuracy in the statement. No inaccuracy? As John Macaro might end up saying, you cannot be serious. This was a meeting with a Russian lawyer accompanied by at least four of the people that the campaign took because they were told it was part of a Russian government-backed effort to incriminate Hillary Clinton. Did Trump Jr.'s first statement mention any of that? Nope. Consider this one. On Sunday, I spoke with one of the president's top outside advisors, his former campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, about White House turmoil and the new chief of staff, John Kelly. And out of nowhere... Corey Lewandowski brought up this person and topic. I think the general should relook at firing Richard Cordray, the CFPB. It's my recommendation to the President of the United States to fire Richard Cordray. I have to ask this, considering that you brought this up. Do you have, do you have any business interest here? Do you have a client that wants to see this happen? No, no. I, I have no clients whatsoever. I have no clients whatsoever. That turned out to be demonstrably false, according to a draft contract obtained by the New York Times. One of Lewandowski's clients, Community Choice Financial, a staunch critic of Cordry's office, offered him a $20,000 a month retainer to explicitly further their agenda. Consider this one. Here's what Sean Spicer told reporters back on May 16th when Fox News posted a story that ended up being retracted later that attempted to link the death of a DNC staffer to WikiLeaks. Sean, can we get a White House reaction or the president's reaction to the report that Seth Rich was emailing WikiLeaks before his murder? I don't, I'm not aware of, I, I generally, um, I don't get updates on DNC, former DNC staffers. I'm not aware of that. At the time, we thought that was an innocuous, honest answer. It turned out Spicer was aware at that time. In fact, he ended up acknowledging in an NPR story yesterday after allegations were made in federal court that he personally met with the sources of that Fox News story in April. So Spicer has since confirmed. They were, quote, they were informing me of the Fox story, is how Spicer put it. In that lawsuit brought by a former homicide detective who was tasked with investigating Rich's death, there also was an allegation that President Trump wanted the story out. The White House says those charges are absolutely untrue. Finally, consider this. In an interview that President Trump gave to the Wall Street Journal last week, he was pressed about the controversial speech he gave to the Boy Scouts, which later prompted them to apologize on the president's behalf. Mr. Trump boasted to the journal, quote, I got a call from the head of the Boy Scouts saying it was the greatest speech that was ever made to them. The reaction from the Boy Scouts, we are unaware of any such call. As Chris Carter might say, come on, man. And these are just the tip of the iceberg. Folks, a common question I get from folks in the White House from all levels is how do we improve our relationship with the press? My answer, not like this. If they're gonna potentially meet us, mislead us about everything from crowd sizes to campaign meetings to what was said at the Boy Scouts, throw out wildly unsubstantiated claims, like Obama wiretapped my phones and three million illegal immigrants voted only for Hillary Clinton, and then blast reporters for so-called fake news when they're called out on this nonsense, why should we or the public or Congress or the world take them at their word at anything? That's their challenge. Joining me now is David Folkenflik. He's a media correspondent for him. Hey there.
there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.